Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name's Eric. I'm going to give you an overview of my micro home studio. So this was a little used space in our home that I decided to convert into more of a comfortable studio. I had actually been practicing in this area of our house uh, for several years and this room was set up to be more of a coat closet, shoe rack, storage shelf, recycle bin area. And I would come out in the morning and I would sit, there's two stairs behind the camera. I would sit on the stairs to practice, but I would bring out a music stand and a metronome and a tuner and my capos and an iPad and a Bluetooth speaker. And I would set everything up and I would do my practice. And then when I was finished with practice, I would gather all those things up and go store them somewhere in the house. So back in January of this year, we decided to refresh this room a little bit and make it more of a dedicated space for me. So step one was to give this uh, room a fresh coat of paint. Uh, so I just went with sort of a gray look and I purchased some acoustic panels off of Amazon uh, to try to damp some of the reflections in the room. So I think it was a 25 pack or something like that. So you can see uh, all around this area behind the computer, I really focused on this area to put the acoustic panels up and there's a couple spots on the walls. I also um, purchased a blackout curtain to go behind me because I'm usually sitting toward the computer and videoing out this way. Uh, but there's a blackout curtain there to help damp anything reflecting off the back wall as well as to try to keep a little bit of the noise from going into the rest of the house. So the second step that made this room much more comfortable for me was to reuse this desk that we were going to give away. And so this is a cheap desk from Target. It's about 36 inches wide, so it fits really well in this area. And it really made the space much more comfortable. So to go from um, dragging all of those things out every time I wanted to practice to be able to have a dedicated area was really nice. I found this uh, small armless uh, swivel chair on Amazon and uh, it makes it really nice for being able to spin around and just be more comfortable. Now one of the advantages of having a chair in the room that swivels is that I can turn sideways and play guitar. This room is quite narrow and it's really easy to bump the headstock or the body of the guitar against a wall if you're not lined up just exactly right. So I can turn sideways and play guitar. And then also have a string swing right here beside me so that I can have a guitar hanging beside me all the time. So currently it's the telly. So another thing that really made the room come together uh, was the rug. No, it was this, uh, this iMac. So originally we were gonna recycle this iMac and uh, it really wasn't worth much to even you know send it back to Apple to recycle because it's from 2012. But I decided to do a factory reset on it and just to see if I could use this to watch guitar videos and YouTube videos. And, and it's actually worked really well. Now I've recently started using GarageBand and it's, uh, it's actually performing pretty well for GarageBand. It's a little slow if you're trying to take videos and import them into iMovie and render movies and things like that. But uh, for my primary use case, which is YouTube and guitar videos through different guitar um, lesson sites, it works really well. And if you notice right below the monitor, there's this uh, little monitor riser. It brings the monitor up about five inches. It really helps uh, with not having to look down so much. And I think this was on Amazon for around 15 bucks. Um, I'll try to find a link to uh, this particular one if anyone's interested. But, you know, bringing that up off the desk actually cleared up a little desk space for me and uh, brought the monitor up. So that was really nice as well. So this room doesn't have any windows and it tends to be very dark. Uh, there's a single light straight above just the room light that's on a switch. And uh, the room was just very dark to sit in. So I actually have, there's a cabinet up above me. And on the underside of that cabinet, I put an LED light uh, to, to actually push some light down to the desk. And then I took these two clamp lights, right, that you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot, and I put a piece of parchment paper over it, uh, over the front and just some paper clips around it. And that gives me a little more light in the room. Now, clearly this isn't professional studio quality, but it does light the room up enough that I can actually make a video. So most of my videos are recorded on my iPhone. Uh, I currently have an iPhone 11. 
uh, I think it's doing pretty well on the video quality. I'm actually using the selfie cam right now as we record. And the audio is coming from an iRig studio mic. I have it mounted on a boom arm, uh, which is just right here above the camera. And most of the videos on my channel have used this microphone. And I think it does a pretty good job. One of the things I really like about this is that I don't have to worry about any kind of audio sync issues that you run into by using a field recorder or going through, you know, your DAW and recording and then syncing afterwards. Um, you know, that initial sync in something like iMovie is not a big deal, uh, but there can be this lag that occurs across a video depending on if you're recording on a phone or whatever your device is. And I find those things pretty frustrating um, for just trying to make some content. So uh, I tend to stick with the iPhone and the iRig. No home studio will be complete without a set of headphones. I currently use a set of Bose QuietComfort. I believe they're the 25s. They have the wire. They're uh, pre-Bluetooth. Had them for several years. It's what I had at the house, so that's what I'm using. Um, I've been looking at upgrading to a set of studio headphones. Uh, but what I've had so far, it's been able to allow me to monitor and hear, um, you know, hear through the iRig mic um, what I'm playing. So, um, so that works pretty well. So something I'm really excited about is this new audio interface that I just uh, was able to get. And you can see it sitting right here. This is a Solid State Logic SSL2. So this is a two-channel audio interface. I think it's really in line uh, with all the other entry-level audio interfaces. Uh, you know, Focusrite has the Scarlett series. There's a bunch of different ones, Steinberg, and all those different brands all have ones. So one of the things that I really liked about this particular interface is the big, uh, the big blue knob for uh, the monitors, as well as it being a sort of a designed to be on the desktop. So all of the cables go into the back of the interface. So I'm going to spin this around so you can see, but it has a couple of the combi jacks uh, where you can do quarter inch or XLR for either of your input channels. It has quarter inch jacks uh, for your output monitors, quarter inch jack for your headphones, and it's a USB-C connection going out to the computer. And then one of the things that I really, really like about this is the ability uh, to have both the headphones and the monitors just on and ready and just turn whichever one of those up that I want to use versus the way I did it on the Mac before I used the Mac speakers and I used the headphones and I would have to reach around behind the Mac and plug the headphones in and then when I was finished with that I'd unplug the headphones and listen through the Mac speakers but with with these two separate knobs here I can uh, I can control the mix to whichever output I want to hear. One of the big advantages of using an audio interface is the ability to use higher quality XLR microphones. I'm actually really excited about using this particular microphone. This is the Bass Edwina from Ear Trumpet Labs out of Portland, Oregon. Now these mics are designed to be used in live acoustic environments and it's actually a large diaphragm condenser mic. And so they're really designed to provide minimal feedback and they sound really, really good. My kids have used this in their band One Fret Over for the last three years, and it's been reliable and durable. It's rugged, and it sounds really fantastic. So that's one of the things I've been most excited about trying in this environment with the new audio interface is recording through a better quality microphone. Currently, I have the Ear Trumpet Labs mic on a Proline desk desktop microphone stand. Now, this stand works really well, uh, but there's a couple things about it that aren't great for being on my tiny desk. Is It has this large base that you can see here. It takes up a lot of room on the desk. So the other thing is the back of the mic arm sticks out, and that makes it a little bit cumbersome to use. So it's working for now but I'm hoping that I can maybe get one of those boom arms that raise up that I can just push the mic out of the way. And I'm hoping I can find one that I can pull down and put in a good position away from the desk that I can use acoustic guitar so that I don't have to worry about moving the mic stand up and down from the desk to record acoustic or to go back to trying to record vocals. 
So I also have this Sure Popper Stopper Pop Filter. Um, this is really great for stopping those uh, plosives, all those P's from blowing out the mic uh, when you're talking or singing directly into it. And it works really well. It's a, a very simple design. It has a, an arm that's easily adjustable. And overall, I think it's a good product. No home studio would be complete without a set of studio monitors. So I was looking for something that would give me better sound than just the iMac external speaker, but also would fit in the space on the edges of the iMac. And you can see that there's not a lot of room there. So I ended up going and looking specifically for monitors that have a three and a half inch woofer that would be a little smaller. So these Personas were only $100 for the pair and let me tell you, they're a fantastic deal. So these have 50 watts of power between the two, so 25 watts per speaker. The left uh, monitor, which is right over my shoulder here, that one actually contains the amp and it actually runs just a regular speaker cable to the right monitor. And this has RCA or quarter inch jacks in the back to come from your audio interface. It actually has an aux in on the front, headphone out on the front, volume control on the front, and a power button, which is really nice for that just to be on the front. So it's very easy to turn these things on and off. You're not reaching around behind anything. And they're really, really quiet, which I really appreciate. So there's no hiss or anything like that. Uh, it's it, They're very, very nice monitors. And they have a great sound. The bass in this little room, actually there's plenty of bass. It sounds really good. It gives a really great stereo image setting right here. And I'm overall really, really impressed with these. Now, one of the other things you might notice is the monitors almost look like they're floating. And that's because they're on a Stay Geek monitor stand. And these stands you can purchase on Amazon. They're aluminum. And they raise the monitors up about five inches. And they're C-shaped uh, to free up some desk space. They even cant the monitors back about five degrees so they're firing up at you. And overall, they seem to be a really well-made product and they work terrifically to sort of bring up uh, the monitors to give you a better stereo image. So thank you guys for sticking around watching the video. Hopefully it will give you some ideas for using a space in your house that maybe isn't as usable or a couple of ideas for things that you might want in your space to help you better practice and play music.